And we are back again at Karis Kids Online, where we bring the church to your doorsteps. Well, I know that we have kind of said this before, but we miss you all. We really do. If you have a prayer request, a praise report, questions for us, or even just to say hi, you can connect with us at the email address below here. We'd love to hear from you. It's time for us to get our praise on. But before that, let's first acknowledge the presence of God here with us in this room. Take it away, Teacher Chloe. Hi, children. So now, we will be doing our Acknowledging God segment. So try to repeat after me and also follow with my actions. Okay? One, two, three. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run but not grow weary. They will walk but not be faint. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Good job children!
below we have an activity pack where there will be important information for you that you will need for the lesson today. Without further delay, it's time to unveil our lesson for today. We are back with our prayer power series. In February, we asked this question, what is prayer? To which we learn that prayer is communication with God. We talk and God listens. God talks and we listen. Then in March, we ask the second question. Why pray? Because Jesus prayed and said that we should too. Today, we are learning that our prayers can have big impact. Are you ready? Let's do this. Me too, la. 
It's okay, Vera. You are making me sad too, cause I also miss my friend. <laughs> Why not we pray about it? Huh? What do you think? I already pray every day, still nothing work. Like God cannot hear us eh. Yeah la. Girls, you know how God works right? God always works in His timing. Right? It's not God didn't hear you. God you can even hear you think. Right? Even if before you think, God already know what you're going to think. Sometimes God just wants you to persevere and pray, pray, pray. And it's in God's timing when we just need to believe in God. Okay? Come. Okay. Let's just pray one more time. Let's just pray one more time. Okay. okay? So I want Haley to pray now. Okay? Thank you God for today. And that you take away the haze. And that tomorrow... It will be a great day and that I get to see my friends again in school and that we will be strong and healthy and that you take away Vera's allergies that I'll have no more epilepsy, blood booger. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Okay, actually Haley, you know prayer did, did work, it does work. You know, um, Papa has been praying for you for your epilepsy for so many years. Do you know that uh, last year and this year is the first time you have never had an epilepsy? Mm-hmm. God answered our prayer, you got no more headache already, you know? Mm-hmm. Right? And Vera, we also prayed for your allergy, remember? God also healed you. Last time Vera cannot eat uh, softball egg and cake, okay. no? uh, water egg, right? But now you can eat already. So God did answer our prayers. So I'm sure God will answer our prayers as well for the case. Okay, girls? Okay? So I think it's time to sleep already. Okay? So come, go back to sleep. I Yeah, I know. We're all tired. It's very late already. Can you come to my dinner? Okay, I'm so sorry. Good night, Papa. Good night. Good night, Papa.
shoes properly is such a big problem that if we go to YouTube and type in how to tie our shoes we can see that there are so many videos teaching us just how to tie our shoelaces and they even have musicals to try and make it easier for us to learn listen so is it easy to learn how to tie shoelaces? No, if we are just learning, of course it is not easy. But if you don't give up, you try and try again, eventually we will become so good at it that we don't even think about it when we tie our shoelaces. So, what are some of the other activities that we do that needs a lot of practice for us to be good at? Can someone make a suggestion? Playing video games. Is it easy to be good at video games? No, we have to practice and practice before we can beat our friends at the game. What about swimming? For those of us who love to swim, do you remember when you first started swimming? The first day, was it really scary when you got into the water? Yes, but as we try and try and we listen to the instructor, we become better and better at it and soon we are like fish in the water. And we are very, very happy whenever someone says, let's go swimming. You will say yes, because we are so happy to be able to swim and to go into the water. What about basketball? Look at this person in the picture. He is a champion, isn't he? But did you think he was a champion the first day he started playing basketball? No, he had to spend a lot of time practicing and practicing before he got this good. Now let's see what the other teachers say about practicing and being good at what we do. Hi, I love playing the guitar and I've been playing for 2 years and practice around 4 hours a day. And if you want to get good at prayer, you should practice more too. Because Girls, you know, I love to draw and I spent two months to learn drawing and have to practice one hour to paint a beautiful picture. Ta da! So, just as we have heard from teachers Chiming and Faith, we need to do things over and over again if you want to be good at it. And so, what is the one word that describes doing things over and over again? Yes, it's called practice. And in the same way, if we want to be good at prayer, we need to practice too. Because praying is not something that we are born knowing how to do. It is something that we have to learn. Now the good news is, the cool thing about praying is that there's not just one single method that we have to follow strictly if we want to pray to God. No, there are so many ways that we can pray to God. It is not like driving a car, for instance. Driving a car needs very specific steps. If we do not do it in the right way, 
we could bring harm to ourselves and our family members. We need to know which of these pedals actually stop the car, which pedal will make the car go faster. We also need to know how to move the steering wheel properly so that we do not get into an accident and the car can move smoothly. Learning how to pray is not like learning how to drive or learning how to ride a bicycle or even learning how to play an instrument because praying is not like driving. There is no specific way to sit, there is no specific way to move or any kind of way that we should speak first or not to speak first at what time we should pray and what time we shouldn't pray. In fact, prayer is just like communicating with God. And in the same way that like we communicate with our friends and family, for instance, you know, when we talk to our friends in school, in church, at the playground, and we see them face to face, and we have a good conversation with them, that's one way of communication. And right now, because we are in the MCO, we are not allowed to do face to face communication. The other way that we can communicate with our friends would be through a video call like this, either on our phones or on our laptops or, or computers. Another way that is very used very often in communicating with other people is through text messages. We can use our phone and we can text to our friends and families. Last but not least, we can also always pick up the phone and give them a call and have a good conversation with them. So, just like when we are communicating with our friends and families, when we communicate with God, we communicate through prayer and there are many ways and we can choose the way that we like the best. But regardless of what way we choose to communicate to God in prayer, the main thing is we must practice, practice and practice so that we can become better and better at communicating with God and at the same time make it a fun communication. In our lives, we have a lot of relationships with many people. You know, people like who are older than us, like our grandparents, our parents, our teachers, you know, people who are the same age with us, our friends, our cousins, and even people who are smaller than us, younger than us, you know, our younger brothers and sisters and their friends. So in all these relationships, what we need to do is to communicate, right? Because if we don't listen to them, we don't talk to them, and we don't write to them, then there's no point for the relationship at all. In the same way, when we have a relationship with God, we need to communicate with God. Without this communication, we will not know God. And this communication, as we have learned before, is called... Yes, you're right. It's called prayer. So prayer is actually communication with God. And why do we need this communication? It's so that we can know the person better and that person can know us better. Let's go now and talk to Cheryl and see what she knows of her best friend. Hi Cheryl! Hi! How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I just want to ask you Cheryl, who's your best friend? Tam Wei Ling. Wei Ling is your best friend? You, you like her a lot? Yeah! I see. So, what do you think uh, makes Wei Ling very happy? Unicorn. Oh yeah, that's very good. And do you know what makes her sad? When it's raining time. Because she cannot come over and play with me. I see. Do you know what Wei Ling likes to eat? Mm, well, I think it's McDonald's, just like me. Wow, as we heard from Cheryl, she sure knows a lot about Wei Ling, right? because they have been friends for some time and their relationship is good. In the same way, because we are in a relationship with God, we should understand what God likes and how He thinks when He looks at our world. But before we can try to understand what God thinks about us or the world, let's think about what we think about on a day-to-day -day basis. What do you think about? When we go to a party, what is the first thing that is on our mind? Are we thinking that Will our friends like our dress or our shirt? And when we are out there playing a game with our friends, what are we thinking about? Are we thinking about whether we will do well and whether we will be better than our friends? You know, and when we take a group picture, what are we thinking about? Are we thinking about 
how we will look and which angle that we pose is the best for us. Yes, on a day-to-day -day basis, we think about things that is about ourselves. We think about what we like, what we want, and everything about ourselves. This is generally what we think about on a daily basis. But what does Jesus think about when he looks at our world? Oh, hi! I'm trying to see the world from God's point of view. Are you sure this is the right way to do it? Hmm. Cheryl is right. The way to understand what God thinks about this world is not by going around with a binoculars, but rather it is praying to God by communicating and also reading God's word. What is God's word? Yes! The Bible, by reading the Bible and praying, we will understand more of what God thinks when He sees the world. When was the last time you thought about a homeless person like this? Someone who hasn't got a home and have to sleep on the streets. Or a hungry child. A child from a poor family who has no clothes to wear and always go hungry with no food to eat. When was the last time we thought about people like this? What about at school or at church or at the playground? Do we notice the boy or the girl who is sitting on his own or on her own? Who is sad? Who is not playing with everybody else? With something on their mind? Or maybe crying? When do we think of people like this? Do you know that these People are what is on God's mind when He looks at the world and that He loves these people just as much as He loves you and me. And because God has compassion on them, we need to have compassion for them too. And so we need to stop to think, stop to look, and stop to listen and see what we can do for these people. And by communication to God in prayer, we will build a strong relationship with our Lord Jesus. Thank you, Teacher Christine. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's now time for WWID. And no, it does not stand for Wow Wow Into Me because you're feeling hungry. But WWID stands for What Would I Do? Now, I'll be sharing with you three situations, one at a time, about things that happen in your daily life. I want you to ask yourself, WWID, Situation 1. You follow your mom or dad to the supermarket and you are paying for the groceries at the cashier. You pay the cashier lady 10 ringgit, but she mistakenly gave you back 20 ringgit. Your mum has already left the cashier line, so you are all by yourself and the cashier lady looks busy. WWID, what would I do? Would you A. Take the 20 ringgit and leave quickly or B. Tell the cashier lady that she gave you the wrong change? Situation 2 On your way home from school, you pass by a beggar sitting at the sidewalk. Something tells you to stop and give the man some food or money. Adults would normally think he would use it to buy bad things. You happen to have some money in your pocket or wallet. WWID? What would I do? Would you A. Stop to give the beggar some money or B. Pick up speed and walk as fast as you can away from the beggar. Situation 3 your dad comes home from work a little late with a big headache. He is so grumpy. He gets upset with you because your brother or sister left a toy out on his favorite chair. It's not your fault. You can tell that he's had a hard day, but you feel so hurt because he shouted at you. You want to storm out of the room and slam the door. WWID, would you A quietly pick up the toy or B. Complain that it's not your fault at all. 
None of us can know for sure what we would do in a situation next time. But it would be good to stop to think about these things every once in a while. Because if we stop and think, it helps us to compare what we would do with what Jesus actually did. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's now time for the WWID and WDJD Showdown. If WWID means what would I do, WDJD means what did Jesus do. Let's focus now on what Jesus did when things happened that tested his honesty, his response to problem, and his compassion for other people. Remember situation one? Something similar happened in the Bible. A man called Zacchaeus was guilty of taking money from people that he shouldn't have. But when he met Jesus, his life changed completely. When Zacchaeus gave back more than he had taken, Jesus said this, Today, salvation has come to this house. What did Jesus do? He congratulated Zacchaeus for giving back what wasn't his. How does this compare with your answer for situation 1? How about situation 2? More than once, Jesus fed the hungry. He fed his disciples. He also fed a huge crowd that came to hear him speak. He even fed a friend who later became his enemy. Sometimes, doing the right thing takes effort. Finally, let's take a look at situation 3. Peter's mother-in-law was sick with fever. Instead of making excuses not to go to Peter's house, Jesus went into the house, found the sick woman, touched her hand, and the fever left her. Reaching out to bring healing, even for a headache, is something that Jesus will do. So you see, Carrie's kids, seeing the world the way that Jesus does will help us to do the things that Jesus did. Katrina. I'm trying to remember the power words, mm -hmm. but there's a big word in it, um, and it's the word compassion. What's compassion? Compassion, compassion mm. is having pity for someone right? who has a problem. Oh, mm. so if I see someone hungry mm -hmm. and I feel bad about it, mm -hmm. and I do something like mm -hmm. buy the person something to eat because mm -hmm. I feel bad about it, mm -hmm. that's compassion? Yes, correct. Oh. So now that I know what compassion is, maybe you could help me to remember the power words? Aha! I have just the solution. Excellent. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Luke chapter 7 verse 13. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Luke chapter 7 verse 13. Hmm, maybe the children at home could try it. I'm sure and they can. Yes, so till we see you next week, bye-bye. Bye. Do you remember earlier when we showed you the real life story of our friend Hailey when she prayed in 2015 at the age of four years old and God blew the haze away? This faith story shows us that you are not too young to pray prayers that can have big impact. Your prayers can even touch Malaysia and the whole world in a way that you can never imagine. You may ask, so Pastor Laura, what's next? I want to learn to stop, to look around and to talk to God about what I feel and see. What should I do to get started? Karis Kids. Let's do the 30 second kneel down prayer every day, starting from today. What is the 30 second kneel down? It means that every day we set aside a time to kneel down and pray. For how long? For 30 seconds. It can be immediately when you wake up in the morning or at any point of the day. It will be great if you can paste a large sign like this on the fridge or on your table to remind yourself. For me, I have set a reminder on my phone to pray at 8.30 a.m. every day. 
What shall we pray for? Just three simple things. Firstly, we say thank you to God. Secondly, we pray that God will touch or bless someone. And thirdly, we pray that God will show His love to them. You can download a 30-second kneel down guide from our activity pack after this video is over to help you get started. For now, allow me to lead you to pray for 30 seconds for all the doctors and nurses who are working so very hard at the hospitals. Let us all kneel down and pray right now. Dear Daddy God, I bow my knees before you. I know that you love me. Your love is with me today, and I love you too. God, touch the doctors and nurses who are working so hard to save the lives of the COVID-19 patients. One touch from you can change a person's life. God, grant them wisdom, strength, and good health. Heal the patients too, we pray. Dear God, the doctors, nurses, and patients must know the message of God's love. Send someone to show them your love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise the Lord! Do share with us what you feel that God is saying to you when you pray to God every day. We haven't forgotten your Big Impact prayer cards. You will receive them the next time we can meet again at Taman Billion. But for the meantime, you can download them and print them out from our activity pack. It's been so great having all of you with us today. We hope that you've enjoyed yourself as much as we have enjoyed preparing this for you. God bless you all.